If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome back to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. That's the show where you send me questions and I try to answer them, hopefully in a meaningful way that helps you out. If you'd like to have a question read on this show, your best bet to have it read is to send me an email at thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. I'll try and answer you there as well as on this show if it applies. You can also leave a comment below in the description or below the description in the comment section and I'll try and pull a question from there. You can also uh, send me a question on Twitter possibly. That's uh, at Frugal Filmmaker. I apologize, I have a big apology to make to everybody because I did not get my video done this past week. Uh, actually what I should say is I got the video done but because of certain situations I wasn't able to post it and the situation was this. I was making a video about this. This is a uh, fr called the Frugal Filmmaker Short Film Idea Deck and the idea behind this is it was supposed to be kind of a creative exercise, a deck of cards to help you spur your creativity when you're developing a short film. Kind of a deck of cards with some ideas, pictures, words, to push you in the right direction to hopefully maybe do a little small outline for your short film and give you some ideas that might uh, help you make it. And I had this video made, but uh, there is a link that we, which you can buy a copy of these. And I was going to give you all that information, but the online store that I'd prepared and everything wasn't ready. This design wasn't approved and blah, blah, blah. So I wasn't able to post the video. Well, the link finally arrived today, actually. And it's a Sunday right now. And you're watching this on Monday. So I can give you the link. Uh, but the video, obviously, I'm not going to post these two videos back to back. So I'm going to put this video up this week, uh, Thursday. And you get an idea to see better about what this uh, idea deck is all about. I can put a link below in the description right now so you can get a better look at it or kind of a preview of what this is going to look like and kind of get an idea even though it's not really explained um, by going to the store. But you can kind of get a sneak peek about what is coming this Thursday. All right, let's jump right into our questions. Our first one comes from Daniel Fort who says, I like your Zoom H1 field recorder setup. Recording a second audio track about 12 dB lower as a safety track in case of clipping is something that has become pretty much standard in the industry. I guess it could be done with a combination of splitters, but it would be much more elegant with a single cable that has an attenuator circuit on one channel. I'd love to see a Frugal Filmmaker DIY project on something like this. And this is something I've thought about in the past, and if you don't know quite what Daniel's talking about here, it's that uh, it's very common when recording sound on a film set, for example, or any kind of a project where you're controlling the sound to record in stereo, but have one channel uh, mono obviously and then the second channel is a duplicate of that mono channel only it's 12 dB lower so if there's any loud speaking or unexpected burst of whatever whether it's dialogue or sound effect it won't clip at least the second channel won't clip because you're running it lower or the first channel might cl clip it doesn't matter because that second channel is the safety and it covers you can you can always use that second channel in post to to preserve whatever dialogue or whatever sound it is you want um, and with the Zoom H1, you don't have control over the individual channels. It's just a stereo mic plug-in. I had a link to my vlog last Q&A, which described my Zoom H1 field uh, setup, field recording setup, because I'm using an XLR passive mixer so I can control those two channels. But what Daniel's asking for here is, wouldn't it be cool if we just had a cable that you could plug your mic into and then plug it into the Zoom H1 and it automatically would record the second channel 12 dB lower with a combination of a circuit built into the little cable adapter. And I had this idea before, uh, but I was never quite sure how to do it and actually found a video on YouTube that explained it better. And so I'm going to actually make a version of what I found in that video and I'll leave a uh, link to that video below in the description, probably also on the screen here so you can kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. But it's really cool. And in fact, I'm going to make a bunch of these. I've ordered parts to make about 10 of these. I think they'd make like a great giveaway item. I'm not really necessarily looking forward to selling them as a manufacturer, but they could be some kind of a cool giveaway. Next up we have a question from Andrew Shepard who says, I have $100 I can spend on audio equipment. I'm still deciding if I should get a Zoom H1 or a lavalier system. I do make YouTube videos and I also make short films. So if you have 100 bucks, what do you buy? If you want to get a lav setup or you want to get a Zoom H1, and I'm not sure if uh, by lav setup that Andrew's talking about a wireless setup, which I'm not sure if you could get for $100. However, I would recommend, you know, you can get a body mic setup, which is a Zoom H1 and a lav mic. This is exactly what I'm using right now. Radio Shack mic into my Zoom H1. You can get the Zoom, Zooms on eBay, brand new, from Japan for about 80 bucks. And then you can get these uh, Radio Shack mics for about 20 bucks on eBay. I think those might, you might have to get those used, but that would fall into your budget of $100. So you get the Zoom H1, which you will use for a bunch of stuff. But if you're shooting films and you want to run an XLR mic into your recorder, you can. Zoom H1s are very versatile, they're small, you can plant them on, on people. 
using them kind of a faux wireless system. Uh, there's there's all kinds of things you can do with them. So I definitely re would recommend that you can, you can have the best of both worlds. Next, we have a question from Jay Miller who says, I plan to do a video interview and cut out the person asking the question so only the interviewee will be in the video. Would you have any suggestions for how to put all the pieces together where it will look good? I plan to have two cameras, one medium shot and one close-up. I may even have another on a slider or handheld for B-roll, like close-ups of hands, etc. I'll also be scanning photos that relate to the interview. Um, and he mentions also in his letter here that uh, there will be no jump cutting, so he wants B-roll to cover um, all the things that he's talking about. It sounds like he really has everything. The only other thing I can think of that you would want for something to cut away to is maybe footage of some kind uh, outside the production. Of, you know, if you're talking about, let's say, uh, pollution in the city, you can just go to the city and shoot smokestacks or something like that. Any kind of extra B-roll footage you could come up with outside of your actual interview setup, because it sounds like you're pretty much covered here. All right, another email we have is from Davey Boone, who says, could you suggest a sub $100 camera that can record at least 720p and deliver the best quality for this tight budget? Now, this is an interesting question, because a few years ago, I would have had an answer for you, but today, I can't think uh, of a sub $100 camera that would fit the biller that I would want to buy uh, for filmmaking, because for me, if you're going to buy a camera, it has to have several things. You have to be able to lock focus and you have to be able to lock exposure. And a lot of, a lot of cheap cameras, like a lot of the GoPro knockoffs or anything that's under $100, typically is all auto and it doesn't let you uh, lock those things like exposure and focus. I'd also recommend using your phone if you have an iPhone or an Android phone. The cameras on those phones are pretty good um, on the low end and you can also get applications that will allow you to lock focus and exposure. So that's one way to go. Now, if you just are looking for a camera and you don't want to use your phone or you don't have a phone, you're going to have a hard time finding something that will lock focus and exposure for under $100. And I'm not even talking about interchangeable lens cameras. I'm talking about camcorders that have built-in lenses. There was the Canon A1200, which was floating around $110 when it, when it originally came out, but it's now up. Uh, if you're trying to find one that's new, it's up to like $170. You, on Amazon. Uh, there's some refurbished ones on eBay I saw that were for about $70. So that's okay. Uh, but this refurbished, it's not new. Uh, there's also the camera that I used to use for my car show when I did the Q&A show in the car. It was a Sanyo CG10, a VPC CG10. Those cameras aren't made anymore. The CG20 also discontinued. I couldn't even find any of them on eBay. But those have some kind of quirks and caveats. Not everyone likes those cameras because for example, you can't use AC power. You always have to have a battery inside of them, uh, which can be kind of problematic because it's hard. It's difficult to swap the battery out quickly uh, if you're on a tripod, for example, because of the way the battery door is. And all the newer cameras either are automatic and or they don't give you the ability to lock exposure and focus. So it's really hard for me to answer this question because I could not find anything that kind of fit the bill. And if anybody out there has an idea, please comment below. Uh, for a sub $100 camera, preferably, in my opinion, it should, you should be able to lock focus and exposure. Now, if you went up to $200, your options would open way up, I think. There's way more opportunities, or $300, because then you can start bringing in interchangeable lens cameras, but I know from your, your uh, email here that you don't want to do that. All right, finally, we have a YouTube comment from the last Q&A. This is from uh, Brian Mexicanos Argueta. I hope I pronounced your name right. He says, help, I just bought a Canon T5 and I want to achieve a good image under low light. I get a lot of noise. What should I do? Well, the best answer for this type of situation, if you're getting a noisy picture in low light, there's a good chance your camera doesn't perform well in low light if you're cranking up the ISO and all you're getting is grain. In fact, a lot of these cameras that are a little more inexpensive, they do have ISO that you can crank up a little bit. But from all the cameras that I've seen, typically you don't want to go above ISO 1600 because then it starts to get noisy. Same with my camera here that I'm using, the Sony NEX 5N. Beyond 1600 ISO, it starts getting noisy. So your obvious solution is uh, to add more light. Now, if you want to shoot in a low light situation, that's kind of a problem. Uh, you know, what are you gonna, you're gonna have to choose something, whether you want noise in your picture, or you wanna be able to see things clearly, uh, or just not have noise. You can always, you know, make it fake low light by adding more of something like blue light or something that would, uh, Make it appear to be darker, you know, movie dark, Hollywood dark, but uh, otherwise you're going to have to either live with that noise or add light. All right, that's all the questions this week. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for those of you who submitted emails to me and comments. Appreciate it. Uh, always, if you've got a question you'd like me to answer, please send it to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That's the best chance you have to be on this show and have your question read on the show. Or you can post a comment below, uh, or you can send me something on Twitter 
and I'll try and incorporate all those questions into a Q&A show. Again, I'm sorry I didn't have a video last week, but this week for sure, because the video is already done and the link is now up to that online store, you can pick up, or at least if you want to know more about the Frugal Filmmaker uh, short film idea deck, you can actually pick one up. This is gonna run you about eight or nine dollars. That's what I paid for it to have this printed um, and sent to me. That's what it'll cost you. There's a little shipping cost, but you can find a coupon and waive that. Hopefully that's what I did also. But you'll get more information about what this whole thing is about this Thursday when I post the video. So look for that. All right, so this has been the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Monday.